Taylor, I was going to read you off this message here. Message? Yeah, so the, that girl from the seminar, she said, I've never seen him this relaxed and walks this entire past year. I didn't know this cat was here until, until we saw it. He had absolutely zero reactivity. He's literally blowing it out of the park today. I didn't know that this was even the same dog. Thank you so much. Something happened between you handling him and now I'm shook. Thank you. That was Fritz, Fritz. from the seminar. Yeah. This is going to be a good one. This is going to be fun. A lot of mixed signals, right? It doesn't make sense what's going on here. Because we're barking at Handler, but I think it's more of like, yeah, hey, there's like people here, but also like, let's get the show on the road here. Like, what are we doing? Like, can we do something? I think he's steaming up. Good. But also I think he's being bratty. I think he's like, you're supposed to pay me here and I'm not getting paid. I think if we were to be paying him with food, he would be not reactive. I think he's being a brat. I think he's being a brat. He's like, he's like, fine, if you're not gonna pay me, then I'm gonna do all this stuff. I just wanna enjoy a good walk with him and be able to be confident in handling him a bit better as he's uh, pretty intense. So it was really good to get Tom's insight on reiterating that he is a pretty intense dog and just uh, giving me some other methods and um, confidence as well in handling. Do you have your e-collar with you? I do. I want to try the pager just... The pager? Yeah, okay. just when we bark, yes. Okay. So mark it with something. Good boy. Like, like uh, so you're like your corrective marker, like oh, leave it or something? leave it, yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. So we're gonna pair those two, because sure. that's important. Use your leave it, and then enforce it almost immediately after if he doesn't leave it. Okay. So I want to give him an opportunity to make the decision first, because that's like the point of corrections is learning. Leave it. There. Good. So let him know. Good uh, sit. Good sit. But much better here. So break. We're going to do this one more time. Break. So we saw the reactivity go from like really big to now like once in a while. The pager is really nice just because um, it is definitely punitive, but it's not on like a pain threshold, right? Like we can't tell him, hey, if you bark one more time, you're going to go back to the shelter. Dogs don't. Okay. So how do we do that with a dog? How do we do that? You know what I mean? They have to have accountability and Again, we can't sit him down and say like, if you bite somebody else, dude, like, we're gonna have to kill you, right? right? Like if they understood that, I, Sit. there would be no dog trainers in the world. So how do we communicate with a dog like this to teach them like, you need to stop doing this, right? We need, we need a little bit more control here. So I'm just talking about uh, different corrections. So when you use like something that has a little bit more pain threshold involved, it becomes more physical, it becomes more confrontational. And there are certain dogs that are historical for pushing boundaries and getting redirective, specifically like working dogs. Um, they know like what an unfair corrections is yep. and timing and they'll call you out on it. Come back towards me and we'll do this one more time. But the pager, it's an aversive, definitely. I want you to verbally pay him if he looks at you. Cause right now he's like, mom, 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 look, 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 mom, mommy, mom, I'm doing right. good. Cool, very good, Leave much better. It. And then Abby, just get a little closer to us. <clears throat> yep, it. good, pay, break. <laughs> He's gonna come to you and you just ignore him. I'm gonna work him through this. Man, he's got like buzzing. He's buzzing. So just ignore him. So I'm gonna do this. He's so used to, I think, reacting the way that he is. And any normal human would be like, oh my God, take him. Right? But I'm gonna help him through this or try to. Yes. Good. Fritz was the only dog I've probably actually worked in like the last couple of years. Most of the cases that I work with, like dog owners, you know, no bad dogs, right? They are, they are the issue. And I coach them through, I educate them through, I teach them what to do, what not to do. This dog was spiraling out of control, mentally, physically. It was a dangerous situation. And so this was like one of the first dogs that I've actually worked in a really long time. So I just took the leash and I worked this dog, you know, in the seminar in Calgary for like 30 minutes and you could hear a pin drop. Good. Silent. Everybody was just listening and watching him handle that dog. Just see him work with the dog and see change within not even 10 minutes, I don't think. Just the shift in that dog. Mm -hmm. um, just showing what a handler can do was so cool for me. It's exactly why I came. Marty? It's reading each other's energy, reading each other's body language. It's this silent dance that we did. And that DM that we got on Instagram this morning was so cool because she basically was like showing me this video and this message of like, this is a completely different dog. 
So we change, you know, and, and that's the thing is like my seminars, like that's what I want it to be. I'm there to change the owner's life with the dog and vice versa. But all of the other dogs typically in seminars are just the owners, you know, timing the owner's relationship. This was a dog that was like, I need help and I'm making bad decisions. And the owner is obviously really struggling with the situation herself. And so it was just a cool experience for me to tap into a dog. <laughs> Where are you going, sweetheart? You want to go see the mountains? Let's go see the mountains. This is absolutely... God did good with this one. Chef's kiss on this one, God. Really pretty. Basically what we're doing is we're just hanging out downtown, enjoying all the local stuff, probably getting some poutine, getting excited for Toronto. Uh, a bunch of people are DMing us how excited they are, so we're very excited to get to Toronto, but let's continue to enjoy Banff while we're here. So we're about to go to Starbucks, and a lot of times when we travel, we get the Starbucks uh, Bend There mugs. It's like basically, uh, the little mugs in each place that you go to and I know my wife is gonna want one but I'm gonna shut it down because we're out of room. Nope. Just put it back. We don't have enough mugs. We needed it. Guys training some dogs? <laughs> trying to. Cool. Hey, Tom! What's up, dude? Hi, Tree. Hi, Tree. How are you? Mike, what's yeah. happening? We just saw your message. We just reached out to you. Just saw your message. Yeah, yeah, cool. I saw you train this dog. I go, that's probably the guy. <laughs> Man, that's wicked. <laughs> this, yeah, is, uh, this is Tom Davis. He's uh, like my trainer. My oh, idol for dog sweet training. Sweet. 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 Yeah, yeah. Send me a message when you're done. Yeah, cool. You get up here? Sweet. Yeah. Yeah. Made it to Toronto! Woo! Yay, Toronto! Yay, thanks! Seminar day, guys, super excited. Um, seminar day is always fun for me, it's like game day. We had to switch hotel rooms last night because the hotel room that we originally booked was way too small for all of our stuff because we have all of this. Uh, and also our laundry wasn't done from our Airbnb in Canmore, so now it's all air drying. So, yep, we switched rooms last night at 11.30 p.m. Um, so here we are, excited to be here. Let's go. You can just see it in his eyes, right? And when I see a dog like this, I'm like, I gotta reel this in a little bit. He starts barking at somebody. Uh, what do, what do, how do I fix this? What do I do? Like, hey, just... Quiet, don't do it, leave it, stop it. That was, I was trying to, I was panicking. I was trying to do something about it. He's super reactive towards dogs, like always, people, occasionally. We tried to do the boarding and training and like, knowing that that was the kind of a main issue. Like, hey, you wanna make sure he's uh, comfortable. He isn't just going to full reaction. He's like more like, okay, so what are you like more calm? That didn't really help. Things are gonna change for the better. So let's give him a little break and let's just play with him for a second. Yeah. Just so he's like, Oh, buddy. And you just follow him around, Andre. Just, mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, buddy. Right? Uh, he loves playing. Good boy. He's so funny. He's just a big puppy. Oh, yeah. Kind of making the dog a little bit more comfortable, but also when he's coming out and he's like, huh, oh, what, are, what are we gonna. Yeah, you. Uh, I'm just giving him something to do. So instead of just like building all that up in his own head and becoming what we would say like anxious, yeah. like he's just looking anxious, he's sounding anxious. I'm basically taking all, because all that is is mental for the dog, right? So he's all up here with that and he doesn't know where to put it, right? Because he comes out here and he's like, well, what do I do? How do I, what do I do? What, what am I supposed to be doing? Uh, and then I'm like, hey, look at the ball. He's like, ooh, ball. And so I'm, take, I'm taking all that energy and I'm just putting it into something. So let's do a little bit of healing towards me. I just want to see what that looks like. Yes. Slow uh -huh. down. Stop. Sit. 
Good. Yes. Just yes. hold on and stop. Good. So right now engagement is your biggest flaw. It's not your flaw, it's what he's struggling with right now because he's just checking everyone's IDs right here. He's like looking at everybody. Uh, yep. He's just doing German Shepherd shit, you know what I mean? Yeah. Intact, German Shepherd shit. So what I want you to do is heal him. So go back the other way. Heal. Good. Yes. Try not to give him a correction on the prong when you heal. Okay. Okay, so just be nice and relaxed. It's really easy to overstimulate a dog like this because uh -huh. he's already up here. So if we push him and push him and push him without reason, he's just gonna riv, riv it out of control. Heal. Uh -uh. Okay. So I'm gonna work him for a second because I feel like this dog has a ton of potential. He just doesn't know what to do with it. And I feel like there's a lot of pressure that you're giving without a lot of direction and sincerity. Yep. Yep. Like there's a lot of just tugging around um, and yep. I want to change that a bit. Yep. Ah. Yep. Ah. Good. Yep. Good. Good heal, Bubba. Good work. This is uh, all of seven months of basically checking out. He's very, very, very disengaged here, which is what's causing him to kind of spiral. So you're only seeing a small fraction of your dog. You could just tell like he's kind of just like out of his mind. Like he's not, he's just all over the place all at once. A lot of that is his age and he's intact, but you're not really, like you guys are roommates. He loves you to death and vice versa, but you don't really have like that relationship of like, hey, I want you to do something. He's like, yeah, sure, I got it, I understand it. Um, so what I'm working on with him right now is just basic engagement. Like you could just tell he's gotten months and months and months and months and months of getting away with things over and over and over again, bop, 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 bop. And I want things to matter to him. And right now things don't matter as much. Once you hone that in, things are gonna change for the better, which is nice. That's what I'm seeing with him. The reactivity doesn't, I don't give a shit about the reactivity because right now it, looking at this dog, when he comes out, he's like just completely disconnected. My engagement with him sucked. Great, yeah, like, so please tell me how I can fix it, right? And Tom was like explaining that, showing like himself, like, hey, this is how we do it. And for me, it was great because I'm the type of person who can learn best by just observing, just being part of the process. And when somebody is also working with your dog, and you're like, okay, so he could do all those things nice, but when he gets this, and also the feedback loop. Put all the leash in your left hand. Okay. Fold it in half. Less is more. Come back this way. Yep. Look at me. Slow down. Good. Slow down and stop. Good. Inside turn. So turn right inside to him. Take your, yep. Good yep. boy. Yeah, he's like, okay, I know this dance. A again, back to me. Oh. So see that forging there? Use your body uh -huh. to eliminate that forge. So let's say somebody gets up and he starts Yo. to go that way. Yes. Use your body to counter that and correct him out instead of use your leash. Because your leash right now is just. Okay, so like. Well, not like that. Yeah. You'd be more like, I'll show you. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So when you get that distraction here, you'd be more, you'd be more like doing this and then this. And when you do that heel, when you do that, just pull back a little bit. So, yep, but uh, we're not gonna pop. We're just gonna come into this turn, kind of mm -hmm. like, like horsemanship a bit. A sure. little bit of pressure on the rein. Just pull. So as you turn, a little bit of pressure. So a little bit so that he feels it. Uh -huh. Okay. Heel. Yeah. Ooh, wow. Yeah. yeah. Slow down and stop. Yeah. That yes, feels good better. Boy. Looks better. Oh, wow. It was like he knew what I was going to do. Yeah. Yeah. And somebody said he's calmer and you're seeing that, right? He's starting to like, oh, okay. okay. Yeah. It's like getting into an ice tub. You're like, oh, and you yeah. just learn how to, to cope with the stress that's going on. And that's what's happening here uh -huh. is he's learning how to deal with the stress. Yes. And the more Help. we do this and the longer we're good. in the tub, the better he's going to be. So yes. over the next couple of days, this is gonna be a huge shift in this dog. I felt incredible. Like on the way back, we were like, wow. Like my wife was like, did you see how he did? Like the, that he walked right next to like all the other dogs and like, it was fine. Like, yeah, like, wow. Cause we were like blown out of proportion because that was day one, right? We were thinking maybe by the day two, we would get somewhere maybe just sitting, I don't know, hundred meters away and then it would be fine. But no, like today was also like just like a next level. Today was what was different is like hey here is like a methodology how you can build up this 
kind of the tolerance with patience, just being being around other dogs and hey, they're good, and just not waiting for the moment when he like up right, but just waiting like two or three seconds, whatever. Before that, you see some initial signs of hey, break, and doing the breaks was like wow, because I was over controlling. He was like he try to do things like no, 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 no. I was like really military with him, and today he also opened up like with uh, just hanging out, chilling, and coming up to sniff people like wow, I couldn't believe it. What I learned here, I have not learned anywhere else, like the subtleties, the things that Tom Davis pointed out to me, I have not had others. I needed somebody to slow it down, to take the time to point out, like, do you see his body language? Do you see how you behaved? I, I needed that and I got that tenfold here. I'm gonna cry, like that was, this weekend has been great. We registered our dog, Doug. He is super reactive to everything. It's easier to list things that he wasn't reactive to. We broke everything down. It gave us confidence in our handling, um, confidence around other dogs, around other people. We did leash handoffs, which it was just amazing. The Tom's handling, his read, the way that everything was set up. We went from a dog that we couldn't really take anywhere to now we have more confidence that we can take him out and continue his journey. I'm taking home like all the the way Tom talks to his clients and all the way he helps people and the images that he gives so that people learn how to um, how to see their dog but also how to see themselves and how to create a better relationship. Like when I see him work with a dog and then he gets into his mode and he gets into his work and then he's able to translate that to the owner and then the owner has a oh yeah and then the owner feels it like especially I saw that with the German Shepherd. Yeah. Like it was it was a oh, big big opening yeah. thing. It was, uh, it was like in uh, his bubble and yeah. doing his so after that oh I figure it out and yeah. he vomit the, 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 the information. Yeah and I think it's really precious to be able to assist to that and to be able to see him work. I told my friend that I, I was gonna meet Tom Davis I talk about him a lot he's like are you sure you want to meet your heroes? That might not be that great. And I'm like, no, he's actually really cool. He is like what you see in the videos. And it's like when the cameras are off, like it, it doesn't, there's no, um, he doesn't check to see that the cameras are running. They're just going and he's like that. And then when they're off, he's still like that. And it's, uh, it, it's, it's really cool. And it's very uh, relieving to see that he actually is that cool. <laughs> he is very personable in the way that he does things. And he just, he's real. Um, he gets right to it with you and gives you all the things you need on how to live day to day with your dog. This is what I love to do. This is all I want to do. This is all I do do. Um, and, it's, and it's really real. Yeah. I think, like we say in French, it's a crise de bon gars. <laughs> <laughs> He's a really good guy. Yeah. Say thank you, Canada. <laughs> we love you, Dada.